All right, what is up guys, Simon from BernieBest.com. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a way to code for the KY-040 rotor encoder, or any encoder for that matter, but that module is very popular, you can find it anywhere. And I've used those before in previous projects, and the way I was using them, I was using an interrupt routine to actually detect when I was uh, rotating the shaft. And the problem with that is that these are cheap, but they do bounce a lot, so they would enter the interrupt routine uh, much too frequently and they would jump a lot when I was uh, trying to rotate. It, it was okay for most projects, but I wanted to see if there was a better way to actually remove all that bouncing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to code without using an interrupt at all, and the results are pretty good. So without further ado, let's go check it out and we'll be right back. All right, so here's the first code we're gonna to use today. Uh, as you can see, it's very short uh, because all it does is that it reads the clock pin and the data pin of the rotor encoder and puts the results on the serial monitor so we can have a look. Uh, so we have some variables here, the pins that connected to. Uh, the interrupt will run anytime we rotate the shaft. It doesn't matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. It will go in here and put that value to uh, that variable to true. Uh, then we have the main setup, so it will begin at a high baud rate so we don't miss anything. And we attach the interrupt 0, which is always connected to pin 2 on uh, the Uno or Nano, uh, which is connected to the clock pin of the rotary encoder. And anytime it changes, it will run this uh, interrupt right here. Uh, then the main loop, if the turn is detected, we put it to false because we don't want to repeat over and over again. And then we print the results of the uh, clock pin and the data pin. And a little delay of five just to debounce. It will not work very well, but it will help us. So there you go. That's the first uh, piece of code we're going to use. So let's uh, upload that and test it out. All right. So I loaded the code on the Arduino right here and I'm ready to go. Um, I will open up the serial monitor so you guys can see what's happening. Uh, so I'm going to start by moving one notch at a time clockwise. So let's see what happens when I do that. That's one notch. I get 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. And one more. And I get 1010. Zero, one, zero. Uh, you can see it doubled there because it's reading it very fast. And the code we just saw doesn't have any debouncing in it. So let me do one more. And it goes back to zero, 01. And I get a zero, 00. That one is a bounce. So if I do it again, I get 1010. One, zero, one, zero. one more. 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. And one last one, one zero one zero. So we can see that when we rotate clockwise, we get zero one one zero zero one. So these are the values we're going to keep track of. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise. So one, I get zero zeros. One more, I get one one, and one last one. Back to zero zero. So when we go counterclockwise, the values are one one zero zero one one. So with those values, now we can code for that and make sure that when we receive a value, when we rotate, we can know if that's a valid one. And we'll also need to know that, if, let's say we're going counterclockwise and I stop here, we're at one one. So if I go now reverse direction, I get zero one. So I need to keep track of that one too. And if I go clockwise, I'm at zero one and I go counterclockwise, I go to one one. So with all these values, we can build a table and then check for that. So now let's go see the main code and see how we're going to use those values. All right, so now that we have all those values, let's see how we're going to use them. Uh, this is all the code we're going to use today. I'm going to go at the beginning fairly fast. So this is the uh, pins of the rotary encoder module. Uh, these two variables are used to do the millis. Uh, debounce method. I, I did a video on that. You can check that here if you want more information. Uh, two variables here to hold the state of the rotary encoder and a counter variable to um, keep track of the counter. Now this here is library is used for the LED matrix. Uh, this is a, its connection and uh, then we get to the main setup. So we have previous clock is equal to digital read of the rotary encoder pin clock right now at the startup. So we can do a comparison when we actually rotate it. Do the same thing for the data pin. Uh, we're using the switch pin, the integrated switch on the rotary encoder to reset the counter. So that needs to be an input pull up. Uh, I did a video on that as well. You can check that out right here. And then we start the matrix and display the counter, which will be zero at the beginning. 
Uh, now we get to the main loop, so we debounce at the beginning. If it's if it's okay, then we check rotary, and that is right down here. So we'll check that right after. This is where we use all those values that we got uh, before. Uh, once it's done, we uh, refresh the previous clock and previous data with a digital read of each pin. And uh, then here we check if the switch on the rotary encoder was pressed. If it was, then we reset the counter to zero. All right, so now here is where we use all those values to debounce the switch. As you can see from the table here that we got, uh, we can know when we rotate uh, clockwise what the next value should be, uh, and as well as when we go counterclockwise. And if we go from counterclockwise to clockwise and clockwise to counterclockwise. So all these if statements actually check for all that. So I'm just going to do the first one. The other one should just check for different uh, occurrences. Uh, so if the previous clock, that's the variable that holds the value previous, is equal to zero and previous data is equal to one, then if the current pin clock is equal to one and this is an and, so all, both of these need to be uh, correct just for it to go in here. Uh, so if uh, the clock pin is equal to one and the data pin is equal to zero, and if we check our table, it makes sense, from 0, 1 goes to 1, 0, that indicates a clockwise rotation, then we increase the timer. But if it's not that, we might it might be something else. So we check, so we're still in this if statement here. Then we check if the current clock is equal to 1 and the data is equal to 1. That would indicate that from 0, 1, it went to 1, 1. That would indicate clockwise to cl counterclockwise. So we're going the other way now. So we decrease the timer. So there you go. That's the way it works. Hopefully that makes sense. All these other ones, they're just checking for different occurrences of the values. And we have four of them, as you can see. Uh, so there you go, guys. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. Uh, I always invite you to check out my website. I have the code available, uh, more information, uh, so you can take your time, look at the code, and actually uh, see how it works. And uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, upload that code and test it out. All right, so now that we had a look at the code, it's ready to go. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to rotate the uh, rotary encoder and see what happens. So let's go clockwise first. There we go. It seems to be following very well. There we go. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise, try to hit zero as fast as I can. Not too bad. And it goes very fast. If I go up to 100, go back to zero, go right there. And there you go. So the accuracy is vastly improved over the other ways I used to do it. Uh, so hopefully you guys find this code uh, very useful in the future, uh, maybe in a project that you're going to use one of these uh, rotary encoders. And uh, yeah, I really like it and it works really well. And I'm probably going to use this code from now on when I use these guys. Uh, so let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting. I know I'm going to use this code in future projects because it, it works really well. Um, also, I want to thank everyone that has been uh, following me for the past year. I've been doing uh, YouTube for about, what, four years now? And I want to thank you guys for keeping up uh, with me. Uh, also, since this is a new year, I want to wish everyone out there a happy, safe, and a great new year. So, as always, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.